This is the Itel P55 5G. And it's been two weeks using this smartphone. And my experience, there are so many things to admire about this phone. It is a very good budget 5G smartphone. And the performance is good for everyday use. And it is affordable. And also, this is Itel's first 5G smartphone. And it's a very good attempt, especially for the processor shipped into this smartphone. Personally, I never saw this coming, at least not from Itel. But how they managed to pull out the surprise from the Itel S23 Plus? Now we have their first 5G smartphone. See, in the coming year, Itel will definitely introduce their own affordable smartphone. Just keep watch. One of the things I've really enjoyed on this smartphone is the speed, the processing speed, how it responds to touches, launching apps, and also multitasking. Two weeks later using this phone, it is the best yet from Itel and also the fastest amongst all other devices in the P series. You have the P55T, the P55 Plus, and the P55 that I recently reviewed. You probably haven't seen that video. The link is in this video description or probably showing somewhere around your screen right now. So after watching this video, you should check it out. So for 140,000 in Naira, you have a 5G phone that is powered by MediaTek Dimensity 6080 chipset. It is 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. For the price, I would say it is okay because you're paying that amount to get a 5G phone. And secondly, the design. The design is different from the iPhone copy that is really trendy now. And that's another thing I really do admire here on this smartphone. The design. The fact that I to skip the iPhone clone idea and instead gave the P55 a different look. I really do appreciate it honestly. You have a nicely curved corners with a gradient back that has a textured finish. And holding the phone. Holding the phone provides a pleasant feeling, but also helps keep fingerprint and smudges at bay. This phone is also relatively lightweight, weighing in about 190 grams, making it comfortable to hold for extended periods. And of course, out of the box, you do have an included case for the device. So in case you want to use it that way, and then you have an included 18 watts fast charger with a USB Type-C cable and the earphones. Now seeing this phone for the first time, it doesn't look cheap in any way especially getting this blue color. And then for the external features, you have the fingerprint unlock that is also the power button, and then the volume up and down keys, a tray for two nano SIMs and your memory card. And below you have the down firing speaker, the USB Type-C and the earphone port, and lastly the microphone for calls. The display was also impressive with a 90Hz refresh. It is a 6.6 inch HD plus display with the water drop notch that houses the front facing camera. So it would have been nice to have a punch hole here that resonates with the dynamic bar or the magic ring because it felt like it takes a greater part of the display just to showcase the dynamic bar. And then consuming media content is also colorful. You have noticeable bezels and it is a 720p resolution but you can watch videos above 720 resolutions, especially YouTube videos. Now the spectacular thing about this phone's display is that it doesn't lag behind while you're scrolling through the apps because you have a 90 hz screen refresh here. And of course, it is an IPS LCD and not AMOLED like the S23 Plus. My experience with this phone's camera wasn't really mind blowing. It is a primary 50 megapixels camera. But considering the processor here, the MediaTek Dimensity 6080 chipset also supports up to 108 megapixels. So it would have been nice to have 108 megapixels here on a 5G smartphone, at least to set it apart from the rest of the series. But it is what it is. Daylight pictures had good details because of the good light condition. And also colors were defined too. But in low light conditions, some details were missing. At some point, it does struggle a bit to give an accurate detail. Even the portrait images performed average. And then you have an 8 megapixel selfie that captured limited amount of details in its pictures. Videos were recorded at 1080p with a limited amount of details, but has good color reproduction and no stabilization. Now, although the battery here is a 5,000 milliamps battery capacity, but in my experience, it did not last as long as the P55, which I believe has the best battery in this series, because the processor on the P55 does not fit so much on battery life. But here on the P55 5G, it is a powerful processor and it is expected to drain the battery life. Well, that depends on your usage, but it did took me through the whole day for me to find time and charge my battery. Now, an overall performance of this smartphone is okay, given that it is the first 5G attempt from ITER. 
And even better, they gave us a powerful processor that can handle most heavy tasks. So for two weeks now, I've really enjoyed the performance of this smartphone. But it is a little bit far from being a perfect 5G smartphone, especially the camera. Now, one of the major reasons why you would probably not buy this phone is if you have too much expectation. And also, if you're not an ITOR believer, you'll probably look the other way. But as they keep surprising everybody, I think it is time for us to start believing on ITOR. Because going into the new year, there is more to come from this brand. And I know you guys have your personal opinion about this smartphone, the ITEL P55 5G. So let's go to the comment and talk about it. Before you guys cross over to the next year, please, I want you to do this one thing for me. Please, kindly hit on that subscribe button. It is totally free. Please, just touch it. And let's cross over together. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I will see you in the new year. Happy New Year 2024. God bless you.